Hey everyone, Nubkex here, and in today's video, we're going to be discussing the Priest class in Shadowlands. Is it any good? This is the third class we're looking at in our class review series, so I hope you've been enjoying it so far. We're going to look at the Covenant abilities, we're going to look at then some of the general changes that are going to affect all the Priest specs, in particular uh, Mind Soothe and Power Infusion, and then we're going to discuss each spec individually as well, and just talk about whether they've improved or disimproved for, uh, from BFA going into Shadowlands, and just how I think the specs overall are performing. So, without any further ado, let's dive in. For the Covenant abilities for the Priest, um, I would say that they're okay. You know, they're not amazing, they're not terrible, th there's a decent variety, but I think that they are just only okay. My least favorite one is probably the Night Fae. Uh, this has been reworked several times. This is now this Fae Guardian ability. You're going to summon in three Fairy Guardians, which are going to hang out for 20 seconds. There's a Wrathful Fairy, which is going to follow the last target you cast Shadow Word Pain on. Uh, and you can obviously move it around by recasting any of these abilities. Uh, but the Wrathful Fairy is going to restore mana whenever you directly attack the target or give you insanity if you're a Shadow Priest. There's a Guardian Fairy, which gives you 10% damage reduction. That's going to go on the last person you do a Power Word Shield on. And then there's the Benevolent Fairy, which is probably the most exciting one, which is going to follow Flash Shield for Holy or Shadow Man for Disc and Shadow. And that's going to increase cooldown recovery rate of a major ability by 100% for those 20 seconds. So essentially, it's going to give them 20 seconds off their major cooldown if you keep that Fairy on them 100% of the time that the Fate Guardian spell is active. Not that good for the priests themselves, right? It's going to reduce Shadow Fiend for Shadow and Disc, which is meh. And it's going to reduce Divine Hymn for Holy, which is okay, but not that great. I mean, you're typically... Unless it is going to line up very, very well with a particular raid fight, I don't think it's that big of a deal. It's unlikely that you're going to need that, ra that raid healing cooldown uh, that frequently. So uh, this is definitely going to be something that you're going to be looking to put on your teammates a lot more than you're going to be putting it on yourselves. Obviously, some standouts would be something like a Destruction Warlock with Summon Infernal or an Arcane Mage at Arcane Power. You know, these specs that have these very powerful burst cooldowns where, where they are very cooldown dependent compared to Shadow Fiend, which is really underwhelming. So, yeah, I think that's what you're looking for. Though, that being said, there are some legendaries which do boost up the Shadow Fiend and that, that gives you some nice synergies there. You'd definitely be pushed into those, I think, if you go for Night Fae. But yeah, I think there's some potential for this to possibly be quite broken, maybe. <laughs> it's possible that there will be some fights or some Mythic Plus strategies where you could pull around expecting to get that cooldown reduction on some of these major DPS abilities. You know, like you could easily do a Mythic Plus route where you have a major pull, which is going to come a minute and a half, uh, a minute and a half after another, a previous major pull. And getting that cooldown reduction onto a fire mage, for instance, and bringing combustion from two minutes down to like one minute forty, that could that could be a big big impact on the root. That could be good. So I think there is some potential, for example, for this to be relatively broken. But uh, for me, I think the effects are relatively minor, generally speaking. It's kind of cool. It's a nice little supportive thing, but I don't think it's as exciting to use as the other one. Another one which is only so-so, I think, is Unholy Nova. Essentially, this is a one minute, a short cooldown, right? AoE ability is gonna do AoE damage in the form of a 15 second dot. And it's also gonna do AoE healing when you cast a spell. Uh, allies who attack the target with a dot on them get a tiny bit of healing every time they attack them too, which is kind of nifty. Um, this has been flagged for rework. So we're not certain though if they're gonna do it, right? Blizzard, we we data mined the the a potential rework to this covenant ability, but Blizzard said, guys, this is very much a testing thing. We don't even want feedback on your thoughts on this. That's how that's how theoretical, that's how uh, tentative it was. So who knows? I mean, maybe this will be reworked. Maybe it won't be. I, I expect that either way, that this will fill the niche of, you know, short to moderate cooldown that's going to focus on AoE damage and healing. And I think that's fine. It's not exciting, but I think it's fine. The final two Covenant abilities, I think, are a lot more exciting. Obviously, the most exciting one, the, the standout one, is the Kyrian ability, the Boon of the Ascended. Big three-minute cooldown, short little cast to activate it, and then you go into this Ascended form for 10 seconds. Uh, it's going to give you two new spells, Ascended Blast, which replaces either Mind Flay or Smite, uh, and then Ascended Nova, which is going to just be spammable with the uh, Boon of the Ascended button itself. Ascended Blast has a short cooldown, but it does a big chunk of single target damage, heals an ally for 100% of the damage that it does, and it's going to generate five stacks of Boon of the Ascended. Ascended Nova is spammable, it's going to do a low amount of AoE damage and a low amount of AoE healing, and it will give one stack of Boon of the Ascended for every target that you damage with it. And then at the end of those 10 seconds of spamming those things out, you're going to activate an Ascended Eruption, which is a big chunk of AoE damage and AoE healing, 
and it's going to scale up to be even stronger based off of each stack you have of Boon of the Ascended built up from spamming those abilities. So it's really fun. This is awesome. This is really, really great. Uh, it, it, it's, yeah, it, you know, for 10 seconds out of every three minutes, you get to kind of play a, a different a different spec, this super powerful cooldown. And it's badass, right? It's badass. Obviously, the big downside is that it's a three-minute cooldown, and, and it's not going to do anything for you uh, for the other two minutes and 50 seconds of your time. But I think that's a great trade-off. I think it's awesome. And this is one that I could very, very easily see myself picking. That being said, at the moment, I am favoring actually the Venthyr ability, Mind Games. Although this was my least favorite when I first looked at the Priest. So this is a 45 second cooldown, and it just does a big chunk of single target damage, right? This is your short CD single target confidence ability. It does a big chunk of damage, but it does have this very cool effect, right? It puts this Mind Games debuff on the target, and for the next five seconds, and you can extend that uh, duration with Conduits. Um, but it's going to reverse the next chunk of damage they do. It will turn it into healing instead. So in a dungeon, you cast this on the boss. And the next time the boss tries to damage your tank, a big chunk of that damage is going to heal the tank instead. Uh, or to use this in PvP for a similar effect. Uh, and also, the next chunk of healing they do is going to damage their target instead. So again, this, this is obviously, this stands out as being amazing for PvP, right? When you're going for a kill, smack a mind games on the healer. It's going to do a big nuke of damage to the healer. And then the next chunk of healing they do isn't going to heal. It's going to do damage instead. That is so punishing. That's so punishing. Like, especially for Shadow Priest, I think this is really dirty where you can put Vamp Touch on somebody. And if the healer dispels it, the healer gets feared. It's easy to see. And then you smack the healer with mind games. And then that healer's in a terrible situation. They don't have a dispel for the mind games. Uh, so they're just going to have to, to deal with that. So that's pretty spooky for sure. Uh, has great synergies with disc as well. I'll talk about that in the disc section. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention, this also does give you some insanity for Shadow Priest when you reverse damage or healing, and it restores mana when you reverse damage or healing for the disc and Holy Priest as well. The thing I like about this is very simply, it's just a short cooldown, and it's a very powerful spell. Uh, it just feels good, honestly. And it has great synergy with disc, but it just feels good. It's going to be the best for PvP. There's lots of single target raid bosses in Castle Nathria. I think it's going to be great there. It's going to be great in any single target fight. Uh, obviously, it's going to be weaker in AoE than the other Covenant abilities, which are going to do AoE damage. But I'm actually fine with that trade-off. This, for me, is personally, right now, my favorite one. But yeah, I, I think you could very reasonably, you know, go for the Necrolords for some consistent AoE. Go for the Night Fae if you like support more. And uh, go for the Kyrian if you want to do, you know, big single target or big AoE on a big cooldown. Uh, you know, the choice is up to you, and I think there's a reasonable choice there for sure. Looking at some general priest utility then, there's two things that I particularly want to draw attention to here. The first one is Mind Soothe, and I love this. This is unpruning done properly. This is so good. So, this suits the target, reduces the range at which it will attack you by 10 yards, only works on humans and dragonkins, it lasts for 20 seconds. So very simply, useless in PvP, mostly useless in raids. This is about some solo content, some Torghast content, but more importantly, this is is about Mythic Plus. This is adding utility into Mythic Plus, and I think that is wonderful. It's going to let you do some skips that otherwise you might need an invisibility invisibility potion or a road a rogue shroud to skip. I think that's wonderful. You know, more utility for Mythic Plus only to help two priest healers compete with Resto Druid. Bring it on. Wonderful, absolutely fantastic. Uh, but yeah, the reason I think that this is uh, uh, great, great for Shadow Priests as well, of course, you know, bring a Shadow Priest instead of a Rogue in some dungeons. They can Mind Soothe, fantastic. Just brings more variety, and I think that's wonderful. Uh, and the reason I think this is so good, the reason I love this, is that it's a, it's a situational ability. It's not an ability you're going to press all the time, but it's also not something that's going to sit in your bars and never be used. This is something that's going to be great in Mythic Plus, but it doesn't affect the balance in other areas of the game, which is good because priests have been, I would say, typically speaking overall, I'd rate that the priest class in BFA is a B tier class for Mythic Plus, but they were an A tier class for raiding. So, and probably an A tier class for PvP as well, like B plus. Um, so yeah, you, you don't want to buff them in the other areas of the game, but something that helps Mythic Plus certainly, certainly is very welcome. And that's what Mind Sooth does, wonderful. The next big ability then is Power Infusion, and this one is nutty. So this is a two minute cooldown. You infuse the target with power for 20 seconds, giving them 25% increased haste. You can do this on yourself. You can do it on an ally. And this is a big reason, I think, to bring a priest. It's going to be one of the big noticeable bits of utility that you bring to any group that you're playing with. So, so cool. This is awesome. 
So obviously the flexibility of this is really good. I was initially a bit a bit worried about this, a bit skeptical, because you kind of want to cast it on yourself more often than not. But, you know, <laughs> it's actually the, the ability to cast it on your teammates is what makes this more exciting for me. Uh, and that's where the big appeal comes in, because you can do something like as a Shadow Priest, you can pop it on a healer. If there's a really tough healing check, you can go, hey, I'm awesome at this fight because I can power infuse my healer. 25% more haste for the healer for the 20 seconds, get us through this damage check. That is super epic. That is so, so cool. You could even cast it on another damage dealer, right? So let's say there's a pack of, of mobs spawning in and you've got a Frost DK who's assigned with his Breath of Syndracosa to go deal with that pack of mobs. Like he's the guy who's going to burst them down. You slap a power infusion on him, 25% more haste for him. And suddenly his job becomes much, much easier, much more consistent. I think that is so strong. That's so powerful. Uh, there's even a legendary that gives you the benefits of power infusion when you cast it on somebody else. I think, you know, you could have some fun raid situations where like a Resto Druid innervates you, they get half the benefit, you power infuse the Resto Druid, and the two of you just go ham, healing the team, right? And the other healers kind of just, well, just go do damage, just whatever. We got these two power infused and innervated healers just blasting healing. That's awesome. I think that's epic. So yeah, power infusion, this is extremely powerful. And this is a very large chunk of utility that you can bring to your dungeon groups, to your PvP teams, to your raids. This is a big deal for all of the pre specs. And yeah, it's very powerful. Let's look at the Discipline Priest then. What is going on with Discipline Priest? Well, to be honest with you, Discipline Priest really hasn't changed all that much. You've got Mind Blast as baseline now, which is cool. And it has the shielding element that was formerly part of Smite, is now just part of Mind Blast. Essentially, though, the way I've been looking at this, I've just been using this in the rotational spot that I was using Power with Solace in BFA. And then instead of taking Power with Solace in the Talent Tree, I'm going to take Mindbender instead. And I think this just, it's a, a better, it's a very smooth rotation. It flows really well. And I like having Mindbender as the Talent. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. It's not a major change. Uh, Mind Seer is in as a filler AoE damage ability. Just use this in AoE instead of Smite. Again, it's not a big deal. It's just a small thing that kind of just flows through. Um, Rapture is off the GCD, though it's slightly shorter duration now. Again, that feels really good. Uh, that's a nice improvement for sure. Uh, and yeah, we have Shadow Word Death is in for some big execute damage. That's in for all the pre-specs. I didn't mention that in the previous section. Probably should have. This was particularly... OP for Disc Priest the last time we did the big, you know, when we did our first initial big look at Disc Priest on the beta. Because they had a legendary that made Shadow of Death heal through Atonement. By default, it does not heal through Atonement. Now, they have nerfed that legendary. It now only heals through Atonement if you use it in Execute. So if you hit a target below 20% health. Which I think is actually a good change. It was just too strong. It was too strong, which is a little bit of the story of the Disc Priest, uh, specifically when it comes to raiding. We'll touch on that in a minute. But yeah, overall, you don't have too many major changes here. I actually think that arguably the biggest change, one of the, the abilities that I particularly love is Shadow Covenant, which now works, which is great. So it's a 30 second cooldown. This is in the talent tree. You're going to make a shadowy pact. You're going to heal basically your whole party, five people for a good chunk of a good chunk of healing. But then for nine seconds, you cannot cast any holy spells at all. You can only cast shadow spells, but they do 25% more damage and 25% more healing. And the reason that I love this so, so much it becomes really epic because you could use this for just healing, right? You can pop it for healing. You can pop your Shadow Covenant and then you start spamming Shadow Men's and do some really good healing. And I think that works really well, actually, in dungeons in particular or in PvP. That could work really well, too. It's pretty nice. You can also use it for Atonement. You can use this for damage, right? So you could apply Atonement first before this. Then you pop your Shadow Covenant and then you can go and you can like drop your Schism, drop Shadow or Death. This is where Mind Games, by the way, becomes really good because Mind Games, the Covenant ability is a Shadow spell. So you can just delay every Shadow Covenant for a Schism Mind Games. Get that into the Shadow Covenant window too. Drop a Mind Blast in there and then just fill in with, with either Mind Seer or you could just go into doing some direct heals with Shadow Man. That works too to reapply Atonements, which are going to be dropping off by the end of this. But yeah, it's just, it's fantastic. It's the flexibility of this talent that makes it so intriguing. It makes it so intriguing. Um, so yeah, I'm a big fan of that. Like I said, mind games, but really all the Covenant abilities have phenomenal synergy with the Discipline Priest because they essentially double dip. So like all, pretty much all the Covenant abilities do healing themselves and they do damage. Of course, the damage that they do for Discipline Priest will translate into Atonement healing because half of the damage you do heals people with Atonement on them. So you kind of double dip 
Basically, all of the Covenant abilities have more synergy with the Discipline Priest than they do with any other Priest spec. Uh, which, which is great for Discipline Priest. Um, like I said, my favorite by far is Mind Games. I think that short cooldown, it syncs up with every second Schism. And that big single target nuke of damage translates into a big chunk of Atonement healing. So it's just wonderful. It fits in really, really, really well. Uh, and for me personally, I love playing Disc in PvP. Um, so having that Mind Games effect for PvP as well is going to be super strong. So that's the one I'm very much leaning towards. I think it works really, really well. But yeah, I mean, Disc Priest, it's a beloved spec, right? People really enjoy this one. They love healing through doing damage. It's it's quite unique. Um, although, obviously, the Holy Paladin has kind of, you know, <laughs> emerged as also sharing that sort of design space. Um, and it, it does have different playstyles in both dungeons, PvP, and in raids as well. Now, one of the downsides, or one thing that... Well, it's not a downside for you if you're a Discipline Priest. And for me, I am probably going to be playing a lot of Discipline Priest this expansion. But one thing that does bother me, because I think it's a problem for the game as a whole, and I hope that you will agree with this, is I do think that Discipline Priest, when it comes to raids in particular, when it comes to raids, is just too strong. It is too strong. It has too many strengths and too few weaknesses. I, I praised Holy Paladin and how Blizzard has changed Holy Paladin in Shadowlands as, as being a an example of a, a good healing class that has good strengths, but it also has big weaknesses. So they do really good damage, but they have to be in melee to do that damage. Um, they've got very powerful healing cooldowns and they've got very powerful spot healing, like single target healing, but their consistent healing without cooldowns is weaker and their group healing is weaker as well. The problem with Disc Priest in raids, and it's not a problem in PvP. I think Disc Priest has been a solidly good spec in PvP, but not overpowered pretty much for most of the time. It's been a solidly good spec in dungeons, but certainly not overpowered as well i think it's fine there you don't want to nerf them there but in raiding it's just too good right it's just it does way more damage than all the other healers um <laughs> it has phenomenal burst healing uh, and it also brings damage reduction cooldowns and for raiding in particular the way that that they typically design the fights as being dangerous is usually ability overlaps or big burst damage that's going to kill your raid it's very 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 rarely just consistent ticking damage that is rarely a problem um, and Disc Priest just fits in too well there. They fit in too well. They, they're, they're strengths. They have too many strengths. They have too many strengths and not enough weaknesses. So I'd like to see more weaknesses there. In my opinion, I'm curious to know what your guys' opinion is. My thoughts will be to target the Evangelism talent. I think that in my... I actually think they should probably just remove it. This talent is only taken for raids. It's not really used in PvP or Mythic Plus or solo play, obviously. So you're only really targeting raids by changing this which is where the problem lies. And this is what extends the duration of your atonements by six seconds, right? And this this is what enables the crazy burst healing of the Disc Priest, which lets them just burst heal through these dangerous overlaps, through this dangerous burst damage. Just apply atonements to everybody, like just spread out loads of atonements, like 15 or so on your group, pop evangelism, then they're all gonna last for ages. You've got these, you know, a reasonable duration on loads of atonements, and then you go into your big damage rotation and the atonement healing is just insane. It's just a bit too powerful. <laughs> you take power infusion in Shadowlands as well. You stack that on top of it. And it's just too good. Um, so I think removing evangelism would be good. Um, and essentially that, that removes a lot of the burst raid healing strength of the Disc Priest. It's still there. You can still do it. But it's substantially weaker. And I think that's fine. I think having Disc Priest is going, okay, well, they're still, they do really good damage. They bring loads of damage reduction. And they're still doing decent healing. But their you know, big burst healing to the raid isn't as good as some of the other classes uh and they're just overall group healing isn't as good as some of the other classes and you let those specs like holy priest like resto druid get a bit more time in the sun right let them have their time in the raid like resto druid in particular with flourish let resto druid provide that sort of you know stack up these hots on the whole group and then pop this big cooldown let them do that let the holy priest shine in comparison to the disc priest let them bring more consistent and larger scale group healing to their team let them bring the big healing cooldowns let disc bring the damage reduction and the damage but weaker group healing that's my thoughts on it curious what you think i think it's a problem i'm not expecting either blizzard to change this for shadowlands i expect disc to just be a, a mainstay feature for every single serious progress raid team for probably most of the entire expansion. I, I can't see a world in which you don't bring a Disc Priest, to be honest with you. Um, so yeah, in my opinion, it's a ba it's bad for the game. Uh, but obviously for you guys, it's Disc Priest. It's good for you. Looking at the Holy Priest then, and I am a massive fan of Holy Priest in Shadowlands. I think that this is a straight upgrade over Holy Priest in BFA. You know, most of the other specs have small upgrades. 
Uh, and then there's obviously some specs that are getting changes, which are like, okay, it's a change. Is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. But for Holy Priest, it's just straight up, okay, wow. When you play this in BFA and then you go play it in Shadowlands, you go like, wow, just the core gameplay of this spec is, is just wonderfully better. It's so much better. The biggest change is, of course, in damage. Damage was horrific for Holy Priest in BFA. Not only was your damage terrible, but you had to work really bloody hard for it. So Holy Fire was uh, an instant cast in BFA. Uh, this put a debuff on the target it burned them with a dot but you can stack that dot up to two times but of course to get it to stack two times you have to spam smite and pray that you would get a holy fire reset just randomness pure randomness spam smite if you got the reset you got a holy fire in and you could stack it up to two it refreshed the duration and stacked it up to two then cool you were doing not terrible damage if you didn't get the reset or if god forbid you had to you know stop and actually do a heal instead of just spamming smite then you would do really, really bad damage. So that sucked. That was just bad through and through. What they've done now, Holy Fire, is now a 10 second cooldown. Has a very quick one and a half second cast time. So snappy cast. It's just It just does a big chunk of instant damage. And then it does a dot. And that's it. So now, just every 10 seconds, take the time to throw Holy Fire on the boss or on your priority target. And you will, you will contribute a decent chunk of damage. Obviously, getting your uh, Covenant abilities, most of them do good damage. Getting those in also does good damage. And Shadowward Pain is now baseline for, for the Holy Priest as well. So you can spread out those Shadowward Pain dots. You know, I found it very funny really looking at my damage breakdown from the dungeons I was running on Holy Priest on the beta so far. And looking at it and being like, my top three damaging abilities are, are Holy Fire, uh, Shadowward Pain, and of course my Covenant ability. I was like, okay, my three my three biggest sources of damage by far are abilities that I, you know, I just didn't have <laughs> that are new in Shadowlands. And it just, it flows so much better. It flows way better. It, it really, really is good. On top of that, your core healing has been improved as well. Circle of Healing, instant cast heal, efficient heal to just five people in your group. That's now baseline. Fantastic. Uh, Prayer of Mending, again, another very efficient heal that's just sort of bouncing around your group that is now instant cast as well. Uh, so these are two really big improvements. So you've got these short cooldown, efficient AoE group heals that are part of your core toolkit that are very satisfying to use and very easy to use being instant cast. And then you put the you put this improved damage profile, you put these two new, kind of new semi-new uh, instant cast um, uh, core AoE heals in there and he combined that with the Holy Word mechanic which was in my opinion and I think most people's opinion from from the polls and stuff I've seen for Holy Priest one of the most popular things about Holy Priest right having these big instant cast super powerful Holy Word heals for single target or AoE and then reducing those big cooldowns with just your normal heals that was already really popular and you put that stuff all together and then you give some very powerful you know raid cooldowns like restoring mana with your hymn of hope uh, divine hymn and then, of course, the Holy Word Salvation, which is slightly weaker now. I believe it's been slightly reduced in power from BFA, but it's still a really powerful raid healing cooldown. You've got, you bring some wonderful strengths. I think it, it feels wonderful to play with. I should also point out that Apotheosis has been buffed. This is competing with Holy Word Salvation in the talent tree. It's a two-minute cooldown, though. And this is really for dungeons or for, for arena, where you want to do some big burst healing, right? You want some burst healing to get through these dangerous situations. This has been buffed. This now resets the cooldown of your holy words on top of the benefits that it's always had so that's just a wonderful perk that just really helps it gives some instant burst healing some instant usefulness to pressing this cooldown button which is very satisfying and it just flows very well and i think you put that stuff together and it's just fantastic it really is good it really is good um you are very squishy though this is the big downside of holy priest they're super squishy right you only have desperate prayer at least disc priest they can protect themselves with rapture they can protect themselves with power barrier when they're protecting their team use the holy priest you're just so vulnerable you really are uh i guess the good news is that you have a legendary returning legendary uh <laughs> the, the archbishop uh cloak from from legion that you i'm sure you remember has come back essentially this brings you back to life once per encounter i think it's once per 10 minutes um whenever you die uh you go into your spirit of redemption form and this will bring you back to life after that spirit of redemption expires so it's like one cheat death really really good that's really nice it just gives you that some of that safety net that you'll probably be leaning on a little bit as the holy priest i have to say you're quite likely to die i think is this spec you're very squishy um but yeah i, I think it makes sense right i think it, it feels good um your single target healing isn't amazing but you've got wonderful group healing you've got wonderful cooldowns and you're squishy yourself i think it's a great spec it's very satisfying to play with like i said it's just a pure straight upgrade over bfa um and i think it's wonderful holy priest 
I think it's looking really good. And then finally, Shadow Priest. This is the one I, I suspect most people are curious to hear about because this is the biggest rework that any spec has seen for Shadowlands. A complete rework to how the spec works. Uh, for me, I actually mained Shadow Priest for a lot of BFA. Uh, so I was a little bit tentative at first when I, I saw they were reworking it because while I understood the frustrations that a lot of people had with Shadow Priest, I actually, I did quite like the Void Form mechanic and stacking up your Void Form. There, it was unique and that appealed to me. So I'm very happy to say, though, that the Shadow Priest rework here in Shadowlands is it's just phenomenal. It is so good. This, this spec is one of the best specs in the entire game. It just flows so well. It, it's incredible. The biggest change, of course, is that you're not going to be running with Void Form and stacking up Void Form like you were before. Void Form is now simply, it's a one and a half minute cooldown, right? So one and a half minute cooldown is going to give you a big chunk of spell power. It's just going to give you two, two, uh, two charges of Mind Blast to play with. It's going to give you access to Void Bolt, which is a short cooldown, instant cast, single target damage spell. So yeah, it's just going to up your insanity generation. It's going to up your damage output. And it's just it's essentially just a burst cooldown that makes your rotation flow a lot faster. And it feels wonderful. The thing that you're spending insanity on now, because you're no longer draining it with Void Form, is Devouring Plague. right? So Devouring Plague is just a big single target damage dealer that does a dot over six seconds heals you for half the damage you do as well so you got a lot of self-healing as the as the shadow priest and yeah it's just yeah devouring plague <laughs> it's straightforward it's just a big single target damage spell it's wonderful on top of that you're still doing the, the dots like you were before with your vamp touch and your shadow word pain so that still flows really really well you've got a new mastery right where your damage done is going to increase to a target based off of your three dots you know, for each dot that you have on the target, you're going to do more damage. Um, void Form just gives you that mastery benefit regardless. So that's another perk for Void Form. Um, you got a new proc called Dark Thoughts, where for every dot you have on the target, your Mind Flay and your Mind Seer channels will have a chance to give you a charge of Mind Blast and let you cast that Mind Blast while you're channeling. Again, it's just fantastic. It just, it gives that flow to the spec that just flows really well. It flows so well. It is so good. On top of that, talent tree is amazing you've got so much variety in there you really do uh, a standout talent would have to be searing nightmare right searing nightmare this is another insanity spender but this is for aoe so for 30 insanity compared to the 50 for devouring plague it's going to do a small chunk of of shadow damage and aoe it will put shadow word pain on all those targets if they already have shadow word pain it's going to do double damage so it becomes a good chunk of aoe damage if people are already dotted up so this is this is fantastic it's actually a big strength of Shadow Priest right now is their AoE damage is really good with uh, with Searing Nightmare. The level 50 talent row has also seen some massive reworks. I, I think Surrender to Madness in particular is standing out to me as something that could be insanely powerful. We'll have to see. Uh, it's much better than it used to be. But now this gives you a free Void Form, which is much better than it was before because now that Void Form is a big cooldown, this actually matters, right? This actually matters. So it's just activating your burst cooldown for free, which is sick. For 25 seconds, you do double insanity generation which is again way better than it was before because now you're spending that insanity on well either searing nightmare and aoe or devouring plague in single target or multi-dotting with devouring plague and that damage starts to feel really significant as that you cast while moving of course this sounds too good to be true and it is because if the target does not die within 25 seconds of using surrender to madness you will die <laughs> right you will die so this has some situational uses but i think in mythic plus in some raid fights if you're able to plan around this you could potentially get some insane damage out and shadow priest could be very very powerful i mean there really is just too much stuff here there's so many changes for shadow priest it's impossible to cover them all and have this video be a reasonable length i'll, I'll do some more in-depth guides and stuff for shadow priest because this is the spec i'm likely almost definitely to be maining in Shadowlands, because I just, I like it so much, and obviously I, I was already maining Priest and filling that role for my guild, so makes sense that I keep that up here. But yeah, what you need to know is that it's going to be way better for world content. The, the, you get into your damage and you start doing good damage much faster. Um, it, it's way snappier, way more responsive. It, it flows so much better, that core rotation. Um, so... Whereas, you know, Shadow Priest was working really well in, like, Mythic Raid fights. It worked really well in high-level Mythic Plus, where mobs lived for a long time in BFA. When it came to just, you know, your typical players, like in Heroic Raids, or in just, you know, your, your, your lower-level dungeons or world content, it was absolutely abysmal there. Well, the good news is that Shadow Priest now plays phenomenally well in those. It's going to be great for Torghast as well. It's going to flow really well there. you got loads of self-healing. Your, your damage is, is much more upfront. You have some burst damage now with Void Form. Uh, it's just super good for PvP. This looks insane as well. So good for PvP. Wonderful utility that you're bringing in as the Shadow Priest, of course, in PvP. Uh, and also bringing some, some good split damage 
better burst damage. Yeah, it's just it's just really good. And I have to give an absolutely massive shout out to Blizzard. I, I'm not sure exactly who designed it. I think that, as far as I'm aware, Chris Kaliki. I, I don't know if he was like the man behind this. He's posted a lot of stuff. He's a Blizzard dev. He's posted a lot of, of posts about Shadow Priest on his Twitter. So I don't know if he's been the brain behind the Shadow Priest rework. But they've done just an incredible job here. Such, such a good job. Um, and in particular, in particular, the development process for Shadow Priest over this expansion, uh, over the beta, has been insane, right? So they brought it out first, and essentially every week or two, what they've done is they have come in and they have improved the spec, right? They've taken the biggest problem from this rework every week, and they've improved it. So at the start... Like the feedback I was giving at the start and loads of people I think were giving was that, well, casting while channeling is cool, but the channels were just too short and you'd be clipping your spells. So they came in and they said, okay, we're going to increase the duration of Mind Seer and Mind Flay so that now casting while channeling feels much better. Okay, great. And then we said, okay, well, insanity generation can feel kind of bad because devouring plague being a dot. What happens if, if you generate too much insanity? If you put Devouring Plague back on a target, it doesn't work properly because it's a dot. And they fixed that as well. They said, okay, well, now it works like Ignite does. It's just going to add on the damage. You're not going to lose any damage. You can just cast your Devouring Plagues on the target, and it's going to work. Uh, they updated the mastery. Um, you know, they, there's so many changes, just so many improvements. Just looking at the spec and, and just fixing the biggest problems. It's been just a joy, really, to follow the Shadow Priest on the beta and see Blizzard. It, it just seems like for a, a, a spec that was largely uh, ignored for for four years right in, in legion and bfa they had a lot of problems but was very very powerful in fact uh, they were overall in terms of overall dps they were the strongest spec across all of uh, uh when you take the totality of bfa they were the strongest raid spec in terms of damage you know including all the raids I mean, they're particularly insane in eternal palace for example um but yeah uh it's nice to see it, it just seems like they really care about this spec and and they just they're putting their heart and soul into making this an awesome spec. So yeah, just shout out. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And there you go, guys. That is my look at the Priest for the Shadowlands. As you can tell, I think that the Priest class is a phenomenal class in Shadowlands. The Shadow Priest rework has just turned the spec from a fairly janky, fairly clunky spec, albeit a powerful one, into a spec which is still powerful, but is much more user-friendly and is arguably the best spec, the best design spec in the entire game right now. It just, everything flows together really well, has wonderful variety and talents. Uh, it's just, yeah, phenomenal spec, really fun. Really, really fun. I'm expecting a big influx of Shadow Priests in the Shadowlands for sure. And it was already pretty popular too. Um, Disc Priest, not all that different, but still probably the strongest healer overall. If you uh, calculate, you know, just all of the content in the game, you know, solo content, dungeon content, PvP, raiding. I think it is arguably the strongest healer for sure. I mean, that's the argument I'm making. Um, though I do have some concerns that is a bit too powerful in raiding. I would like to see them take another little bit of a look at that and try to just give more room to the other healers to shine rather than having Disc Priest overshadow them there. And then we have the Holy Priest. Um, definitely the, the least popular Priest spec for a lot of people. But for me, I really love this spec. It's actually one of my favorite specs in the game. I think it flows so well and it's just improved in Shadowlands. It's just straight improved. Um, doing damage as the Holy Priest so much better. The core, the core healing playstyle flows really well. They're just, they're just very squishy, which is a bummer. But I think they're, it's a fantastic and very fun healing spec, and that's the thing I value most. So, for me, I'm looking at main priest. I'm going to be playing all the different specs, and for me, I really enjoy every single one. Uh, so yeah, just S tier class for me in Shadowlands. I think it's phenomenal, really good. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.